1981, six years before the release of Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, Games Workshop published a tabletop miniatures game called Spacefarers, which it described as rules for science fiction skirmish adventures. Two years later, in 1983, Citadel Miniatures teased an upcoming game called Rogue Trader, which was either going to be a set of spaceship combat rules or a sci-fi role-playing system, depending on where you read about it. That same year, Citadel Miniatures published rules for using sci-fi weapons in Warhammer, its mass combat fantasy role-playing game, which was distributed by Games Workshop. Today, we'll talk about all of these Warhammer 40k spiritual predecessors and the huge influence they seem to have had on the game's first edition, Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, published by Games Workshop in 1987. Well, hi folks, and welcome to the channel. I'm Lee, your old hammered host. Today, we're going to talk about some early 1980s Citadel miniatures and Games Workshop products, which very clearly influenced the development of Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. And we're going to start our investigation with the June-July 1981 issue of White Dwarf, the science fiction and fantasy games and miniatures magazine published by Games Workshop. The issue is primarily devoted to articles on Dungeons & Dragons and Traveler, but there's a very interesting ad here for a new game called Spacefarers, which is complemented by an extensive line of sci-fi figures produced by Citadel Miniatures. So Games Workshop published Spacefarers back in 1981 and describes the game as rules for science fiction skirmish adventures. The game's introduction says that the rules have been designed for two players to carry out small-scale skirmishes with each player in control of a unit of Imperial Marines, Dark Disciples, Star Patrolmen, or independent gangs. The game also features numerous pieces of equipment that will be familiar to 40k players, including bolt rifles, power armor, power gloves, jet cycles, hand flamers, and the like. So this means you could have actually kitted out a unit of Imperial Marines, complete with power armor and bolt guns, and battled the Emperor's enemies way back in 1981. Next, we'll look at the first edition of the Citadel Compendium, which was kind of a combination catalog and hobby magazine promoting Citadel products, such as the Warhammer Mass Combat Fantasy RPG game which I think at the time was a Citadel product, though Games Workshop was the distributor. And if I got that wrong, please leave a note in the comments, because some of this early stuff gets a little confusing. So on the Compendium's welcome page, we have a greeting from Citadel's Brian Ansel, where he reveals some of the company's future plans. These include more miniatures and box sets for RuneQuest, ferocious bugbears, new diorama sets, dungeon accessories, Warhammer supplements, and, quote, Rogue Trader are science fiction role-playing rules. We'll be remaking and retitling our Space Furs models to coincide with the release of these. Apparently, though, according to the Stuff of Legends website, this blurb was not the first reference to Rogue Trader that Citadel made. That distinction belongs to this 1983 Citadel catalog, at least I think it's this catalog. Anyway, the catalog makes brief reference to some upcoming products for the new year including something called Rogue Trader, a set of spaceship rules by Rick Priestley, supported by a special range of spaceship models. So is Rogue Trader a space combat game, or an RPG, or a little bit of both? At this point, we don't know. So now we're back to the Citadel Compendium again, and here are two new Warhammer supplements, Forces of Fantasy, Realm of Chaos, and then on the next page, we actually get some clarity on what Rogue Trader is anticipated to be. And at this time, it is clearly meant to be Citadel's sci-fi role-playing system. So let's read what it says here. Rogue Trader, spacecraft combat in deep space, space sectors, space lane encounters, deep space encounters, planetary encounters, journeying to planets, role-playing the ship's crew, bounty, commerce, and piracy, systems and repairs, alien trade, encounters and technology, can you survive an encounter with Dr. Gostolo's amazing intergalactic psycho circus? Can you handle Fear and Loathing in Los Asteros? Find out with Rogue Trader. So it sounds a bit like Traveler or Star Frontiers with a healthy dollop of space combat. So that's all very interesting, but then on the very next page, the plot thickens once again and we get Warhammer and Science Fiction, a multi-page article written by none other than Rick Priestley. So for all those early Warhammer enthusiasts who wanted to add bolt guns, hand flamers, vortex grenades, jetpacks, and more, 
to games of the Warhammer mass combat fantasy RPG, this article had the goods. But then there's more. In the second Citadel Compendium, there's a special Warhammer scenario entitled Riggs Shrine. As players attempt to burgle an ancient Amazonian temple located deep in the slon-infested tropical jungles, they have a chance of discovering wondrous weapons left over from the legendary High Age of Technology. Which raises an interesting question regarding the Warhammer timeline, because if bolt guns and the like existed before Warhammer Fantasy, then perhaps the whole Warhammer Fantasy universe is built upon the ruins of the Warhammer 40k universe. Food for thought. So what does this all tell us? Well, it certainly seems like in the early 1980s, there were some interesting ideas percolating in the offices of Citadel Miniatures and Games Workshop regarding uh, sci-fi miniatures, sci-fi RPGs, sci-fi wargaming, and even the merging of sci-fi and fantasy tropes in the fledgling Warhammer universe. And it's pretty clear that many of those ideas found new life in Games Workshop's fantasy, sci-fi, tabletop wargaming RPG hybrid Warhammer 40,000 when it released in 1987. That's my take on it anyway, but please let me know what you all think in the comments. Maybe there are some juicy GW historical details that I missed that would add to the story. So, that's a wrap on today's video. Thanks as always for stopping by. We'll be back soon with some more tabletop wargaming stuff. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.